Hey guys, it's Tom Box here, and welcome to another video with MSD.TV. And today we're going to be talking about five really important things that you should know when you're playing against True King Dinos. Now this experience is based off of what I have experienced playing against this deck online and analyzing some of the recurring patterns about this deck. Alright, to start things off, let's talk about the opening play. The opening play, fairly simple. They usually have a True King of Calamity plus a Lagiadolka and perhaps probably enough to kill you in the next turn. Probably about 8,000 damage, pretty common opening. And this is not because they're sacked, because this is just because they're really consistent. And they run, what, two engines? The True King engine and the Dinosaur engine. Dinosaur engine mainly consisting of Fossil Dig, plus the Baby Cerasaurus and the Petit Pterodon. And combined with the True King engine being able to pop them off of the hand, basically giving you a free monster, plus, I guess, a free True King. This allows you to, this basically allows them to set up their turn very, very easily. So they, now they have the True King monster onto the field. How are they going to get their True King uh, of Calamity, the rank 9, well they basically go into a Denlong by synchroing with the Jirak YOLO, YOLO, and from that Denlong will mill out a True King monster pushing him to level 9 and then that gives him the level 9. Now while you are also popping off your Cerasaurus and all your other monsters, you are fetching out level 4 dinosaurs or you can fetch out level higher, higher dinosaurs Usually not the case, but if you go into the Obi Raptor, Obi Raptor will give you a search for the Miscellaneousaurus or other dinosaurs. Basically, you can search your entire deck, and that's why they're so consistent. So if your op opponent opens really well against you, it's not because they're a sack. It's just that this deck does hold a lot of consistency, and we'll just have to live with it. So what happens in these kinds of opening is basically you're going back to the unbreakable board situation with a Lagi and a True King, you're basically shut out of all your monster effects, which really sucks. It's honestly, it's like the um, the HP Lovecraft monster, what was it? It's Azathoth, the Eld Outer Entity Azathoth, you're just shut out from activating your monster effects for the entire turn. That blows. And as for the Lagia side, you are shut out from using your spells and traps or even your normal summon. So. Bear in mind that does hurt, so let's fetch our kaijus to fight this board because if you don't have traps or kaijus, you're pretty screwed. Number two thing that you should know is Miscellaneousaurus is a pain in the ass to deal with. This monster is the recurgence of the deck, the recovery, the protection, and also it's a beat stick. It's an 1800 beat stick. It's searchable too, which is... Quite imaginably one of the best things about this deck, and without this card, I don't think the deck would be anywhere as good as it is right now. Now, what does it do? It's an 1800 beat stick by base, but the hand trap effect is for the rest of the main phase, for the rest of this main phase, your dinosaurs are unaffected by your opponent's card effects. That's huge! You basically play the entire uh, main phase unhindered. Now, bear in mind, I am saying main phase, this main phase. If you they go to battle phase, go to the next main phase, that does not apply anymore. And that's actually one thing that has been confusing a lot of players. They actually think this is like the all-powerful hand trap. They activate this during battle phase. That's not how it works. It's only during the main phase, okay? And But aside from the main phase uh, point there, one key thing to bear in mind is that this card can summon out more monsters and recover more monsters by banishing itself on one dinosaur well you get yourself what a baby cerasaurus you get yourself like a petit pterodon you are able to fetch yourself anything out of the deck and once you go into the an ov raptor you basically get to search another copy of this card so the recycling factor of this deck is very insane and not to mention that all these monsters have very strong bodies so you're usually facing like lethal damage pretty easily maybe about two three hits or maybe if you get surprise hit by a tyranno infinity you could get just one shotted right away if your opponent clears your entire back row by baiting it with a lot of other big monsters and they've been banishing a lot of dinosaurs out of the graveyard and all of a sudden they go like miscellaneousaurus banish four cards miscellaneousaurus banish four is automatically a 4k tyranno infinity and that's that's scary, but if you do it even later, it could push like a 10k Tyranno Infinity, and then if they attack through you, you're basically dead. So they've got a surprising recovery, and they can even counter you with a surprise Tyranno Infinity. That's really scary. So body-wise, really big stuff. 
So the third thing that you should know about this deck is that it is extremely aggressive. They don't run on very many traps, but that's besides the point. Most of these monsters have over 2,000 attack. From the True King side of things, they have what? Uh, the Thosa Gym, that's like a 2,500 beater. They have, of course, the, the Fire one as well, another huge beater. Just a bunch of big beaters that are going to kill you. And even on the level 4 side, you have a bunch of 18 beat sticks and Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, Tyranno Infinity. And speaking of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, here's something, here's a good tip. Don't revive anything during the battle phase while that thing is on the field. That thing is scary because it can attack all your monster once. And also he serves as a very good defensive monster as well and very good play interruption if you can't get rid of him. Because if he has another dinosaur on the field, he can blow it up during either player's turn to basically set your entire board. And lethal range, I would say if you're below 3000 life, you're pretty much dead because of course when he attacks a defense position monster, he burns you for 1k and then he gets to keep on, well, keep on attacking. If you have three monsters, that's 3k. Normally they're gonna use him to clear off three extra monsters to deal 3000 damage rather than punching you once. It's not really the same, but backed with a bunch of other monsters, you're basically facing lethal very, very easily. OTKs all over the place with this deck, and basically your monsters aren't very safe while he controls that monster. So monster effect negation will be very crucial against this deck. And the fourth thing that we should know about this deck is that the it is very weak in the battle phase. Aside from like getting like perhaps a Lagia to protect them, Lagia can get baited out, but if you bait out the Lagia, well, let's just say the battle phase, you're in control, whether it be using quick effects from your monsters or like continuous spells and traps. Battle traps are very effective. If you lay and get off one good Quaking Mirror Force, one good Mirror Force, Maybe not Mirror Force, maybe a Drowning Mirror Force. If you get off any traps during the battle phase, that's something that they have a struggle to deal with. Perhaps they'll use counter traps to negate it, maybe a wire tap, but it's not likely. If they have Royal Decree, that is a bit scarier because now you have to deal with their onslaught of monsters with significant effects to affect your board. The thing is, they are very weak. They cannot use Miscellaneous Saurus during the battle phase because that's only a main phase thing. Again, main phase is why I still think the card is balanced. If that card could have been activated during any phase, it would have been busted, super busted. It's like, oh yeah, I can do anything I want and my opponent can't stop me. This deck has the weak spot of the battle phase and the end phase. Any phase that's not the main phase where miscellaneous source can't protect them, those are good phases for you to interrupt your opponent's play. During the main phase while they're setting up play, you can expect their setup to always go through because they can just preemptively activate Miscellaneousaurus and go off with their entire turn and you're not going to be able to do anything about it. But again, just abuse the other phases against them and uh, yeah, well, they'll just have to eat it. Fifth thing that we should know is how to side against this deck. Well, since they do do a lot of banishing themselves and a lot of triggered banishing, Imperial Iron Wall is a pretty good choice. And also, DD Crow is a pretty good choice as well. Be aware that if you're using DD Crow, you are fueling for his Tyranno Infinity. So that DD Crow is gonna give him a 1000 boost. But if you crow away the Miscellaneous Saurus, that's not too bad because they lose a bit of recovery, but you have to do it before they activate because he does have a cost to banish himself, I believe. Now, other things that you can side would be like traps and kaijus, and don't be afraid of using stuff like Raigeki. If your opponent sets up their board with like a Lagia plus like a True King, bait out the uh, bait out the Lagia with something, and then you can like Raigeki the board. It's fairly simple because they cannot use Miscellaneous Source to protect it. It's not a dinosaur. Lagia is a dragon and the other guy is a worm. So the true king is a worm, we have a dragon and a worm, they're not dinosaurs, easy out, kill them both. Consider siding to create an opening, say using traps to kind of control the board, because their deck does not contain very many traps. Uh, they fill their decks with consistency cards like Fossil Dig, Terraformings, Pot of Desires, and basically they minimize the number of traps they draw because they are a more monster-centric deck. This makes it so that if you use traps against them and interrupt their turn hard enough to the point that they don't have a solid board presence with monsters, you can actually establish a counter and basically finish them off without worrying about the back row too much. You can still expect like the common like Solemn Strike, perhaps the random uh, D-Barrier every now and then, but 
note that there won't be too many battle traps involved for most cases. Some people might take a quaking mirror for us, but I can't say for everyone. I can just say as like a generic sense, this is going to be uh, what it's like. They're not going to run too many traps. And that's it for now. I hope you guys like this video. Uh, if you liked it, of course, share it and uh, be ready for the upcoming Maximum Crisis, the Crisis format. And uh, until then, let's go to the end phase. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job. And you can also subscribe to MSD.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV and I'll see you next time.